What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Cosmo, aka the Harpy Guy, back with another deck profile. And today I'm gonna showcase my way of playing Burn of Abyss. Yes, I'm so happy that we finally got a Link Monster. It's been so long. So long. So long. But I'm so happy we finally got it. It's better late than never. Um Carabini opens up so much. Um plays for this deck it helps you know extend plays and you know get monsters into the graveyard to get their effects to go off it's been so awesome and i like this huge shout out to my boy jordan and my boy adam for hooking me up with this card and a guy that i met at my locals this past thursday i think i forgot his name i'm i'm so sorry i forgot your name but you were so you know, you, you just helped me so much to get this card. So thank you guys. I appreciate it. It's good to have good friends to look out for one another. And um that's that's that, that's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. So um without further ado, let's get into the deck profile. Let me show you how I play P Burn in Abyss. Well, I think I just kinda gave it away, but I do put a fan of night version in this. I feel like they're more consistent and the fact that we have Cherubini now it, it it's 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 more consistent. That's what I have to put it. I think it's more consistent. I think it's a little bit better than the pure build, which I love the pure build. But you know. Well, anyways, this is enough rambling. Let's get into the deck profile, and let me show you my way how to play it. All right. First off, to all my BA players, we already know what Skarm do. You know, Skarm, you know, is like the the structure of the deck. You know, it helps you get key plays to your to your hand for the next turn. And she has a big booty of 2,000. I believe that she's a girl. I think she's a girl. I believe so. Yeah, she is. <laughs> she. I mean, come on. You got to have some type of girl in the deck, you know? So, Skarm is, is where it's at. And, um, yeah, and got a big booty of 2,000. So, got to run three copies of Skarm. I can't never see you running any lesser than three copies. Uh, next off, I run three copies of Farfa. Farfa has been good to me over the years of playing this deck. Um, you know, being able to blink out your opponent for one for one turn to stop their their combos from going off, especially Silent Mingrants. You know, that's Farfa does it does does what it needs. He does what he needs to do, and you gotta run through cards of Farfa, especially if you have Beatrice out. You wanna be like, you know what? Fuck you! I'm just gonna just blink out you guys. It's awesome. Like, oh my god, Farfa is good. So you gotta run through cards of Farfa. Um. Next off, I run two copies of Libic. Libic has been also been good to me. Um, I always like always ran two Libics. I never run him at one. I feel like his effect is too good. You know, since we don't have, you know, we, we since we lost Terra Top, you know, being able to special summon a uh a BA from your hand and get his effects negated, help you set up for another help you set up for another um rank three or a link play is, is awesome and you get their effects to go off at the graveyard so i love libic libic is good and he helps set he helps set sets up plays for you so i run double libic next off i run two copies of barbar barbar has is also good you know being able to close out games that's by burning your opponent has come up quite i've been so many times where i won games and barbar have won it for me and you know I did used to play that one, but I'm like, I just want to see it. Like, I feel like if you're playing BAs, you want to maximize your numbers of BAs. Like, you want to have BAs. Like, you want to see BAs. That's like you're playing Mermels. You want to be able to see Water Monsters. You know, that's why I feel like with BAs. I just wish, you know, Cosmo Scary Lion had the same effect as Barbar, but, you know, Cosmo Scary Lion, he's just, he's just awful. All right. Um, next up, I run two copies of Alec. Alec has Alec is good being able to negate monster effects on the field is is good, you know, and then having Beatrice to back you up with him is is is, is good. Like, you know, having being able to have disruption plays by sending cards to the graveyard is good. So I run two copies of Alec. Now for the one ofs, I run one copy of Rubik being able to get to Virgil, you know, being able to do something other than X Y Z or going to a link is. Is is good and Virgo is still it's still a beast. He's still a beast. So I want one copy of Rubik. Uh, next off, I want one copy of Graf because sadly he's at one. Uh, next off, I want one copy of Sir. Sadly he's at one, but he gets the job done too. 
Uh, next time we went for the BAs. In, in the BAs, I wrote one copy of Caleb. Caleb is cool. You know, you get to bounce back a set spell or trap, but it doesn't really matter because your opponent could probably chain to it. But, you know, he comes up. Hey, he's a level three. You can special summon him. You can do other crazy plays with it. So Now, for the supporting cast... I won one copy of Tour Guy. I mean, she's Bay. I mean, what BA deck would, would be out with Tour Guy? Like, she's awesome. You know, I love Tour Guy. You know, being able to, you know, go into your old school play with Dante. You know, it's good. Um, next time, I won three copies of Phoenix Rhino Warrior. Rhino Warrior should have been a BA monster, but he's not. You know, he's an Earth monster, but he should have been a BA monster. But he helps you get into your underclock combo. You know, if you see him, that's why you want to maximize him at three. You want to be able to see him. And the good thing is, you know, when you have a BA monster on the board, you don't have to worry about it getting destroyed. Because his effect, you know, stops stops that from happening. So it helps you go into an easy link. Helps you go into uh, Carabini. And then um, for my Phantom Knight, so for my Phantom Knight engine, I run three copies of Silent Boots. I run two copies of Agent Cloak. And then I run one copy of Rugged Gloves. Yes, sir. Rugged Gloves. I think this is the good ratio to play. I mean, if you don't want to run Rugged Gloves, you can always pop in another Agent Cloak. But that's what I've always been playing with for the, over the years. So I always kept it like this. So, yep. Um, next off from my hand trap spot, I'm playing three blossoms, you know. So um, I like blossom. I used to play Veiler, but I mean, I just feel like I don't really want to see a lot of hand traps in my hand. I want to be able to do stuff, but you know, that's just me. Um, three blossoms, and then for my boss monster, I like to run um two copies of Vanny's Fiend. I think Vanny's Fiend gets the job done. You know, sometimes your opponent probably can't get rid of him and it's probably get instant scoop. So, you know, Vanny's Fiend comes in clutch. So, I run two copies of Vanny's Fiend. But if you don't want to run Vanny's Fiend, you know, I recommend you run either Effect Veiler or, you know, whatever. It's, it's your choice. I mean, this is how I play the deck. So, you don't really have to run Vanny's Fiend, but I like it because... He's so easy. You can just spell some of the BA, then boom, tribute, bring him out. So easy like that. Easy as pie. Um, next off for my spells, a very small spell lineup, which is crazy because I remember over the years it wasn't like this. But I run two copies of Lord of Darkness, being able to dig into your deck and banish your BA is, is, is cool. Um, or Phantom Knight. Uh, next off, I run one copy of Foolish Burial. Foolish Burial gets the job done. Sending a BA or a PK fire is a plus. Um, it's plus city. And last but not least, I run two copies of T Titty Twister. Now, hear me out. I love Titty Twister. I, I wouldn't run Titty Twister. I probably run two Call by the Grades in the main if that was the case. But I just all my my luck. I always run into some crazy ass um, floodgate. You know, either it's uh, um. What is it? Um, Dark Imprisonment Mirror, I believe. Or it's Dimensional Fissure. Or it's just some crazy stuff that people play that you'd be like, what? Really? So it's like, I like to have this insurance of having this. But it's an easy card to side out depending on your matchup. You always side it out. You can put in Call by the Grace, which I recommend because this deck really doesn't lose the hand traps. But, you know, if you don't want to run TD Twister, you could definitely run Call by the Grace at two. But... In my main, I like to main this at two, and I side out my call by the graves. Because this deck really don't lose the blossom, because the effects, they just float. Um, to run, to so for my traps, I run two, three copies of Fog Blade, being able to, like, disruption plays is awesome. You know, my ideal board is having Cherubini, um, Beatrice, and having fog blade out like this that's that's my ideal board because that way you have a couple of ways of field destruction you got fog blade and then you got beatrice and whatever beatrice sends you know that's disruption so and then you have blossoming here if you have it so i run this and for my last tech which is my tech that i love and this is one of my favorite cards of all time you know it's in the bible fire lake i never seen a ba deck without fire lake. i know it's not People don't play Fire Lake, but this is for funsies. You know, I'm not trying to be super competitive. Just having fun, you know, is what it's all about. 
Uh, I love Firelight. I can't see a BA deck without Firelight. There's been so many times back in the day where I would have my Harpy deck or my Blackwing deck, and I'm going up against a, a Burn the Bits deck. This is before I build BAs. They will always fire like me. I'll be like, oh, how you do it? Like, they'll do it at the end of my turn. I'm like, oh, my God. I hate fire like, but playing it is all more than better. It also is circuitable, and it helps me get rid of back row, and it helps me pop cards on the field. And, you know, I just think that it's a, a very underrated card right now. You know, I don't think people really know about fire lake but i mean i understand why people don't play it anymore it's really good if you're playing the pure build but i didn't be able just to have that fire lake you know you can always get it when you need it especially when it's in the graveyard so that's my deck it's 40 cards i have to keep it consistent so i'm being able to see my cards um next off now time to get into the extra deck so i run two copies of Cherubini. Cherubini. um again shout out to jordan Shout out to um, Adam and the guy that I don't remember his name. <laughs> but thank you guys for hooking me up with Cherubini. You guys always have my back and I appreciate it. So if you're watching this video, you got some love here, bro. So Cherubini, you finally got it. You know, better late than never. I'm happy. I think two copies is the right ratio. Um, I might want to play three, but I don't know yet. But from play testing with it, two has been fine. You know, pretty much, you're like, you know, you can probably, if you play in the deck the right way, you can seal the deal. Um, so, if y'all don't know what Carabini does. Um, so, what it does is, uh, whatever monster that this card points to cannot be destroyed by card effects, which is cool. Um, then, you know, if this card was to be destroyed, you can send um, a, another card instead. So, it won't get destroyed. So, Carabini stays on the field. And um, but if it got destroyed by a battle or card effect, then um, the other effect is you can send one other card. You can send one card, a level three from your deck to the graveyard, and you can target one other BA card on the field, and it will um, gain the attack and defense of the card that you sent. So if you have far on board, and you send graph, you get graph's effect to go off, and then you um. Far from become big because he'll get grass attack and defense. So it's really cool. This deck really can't OTK, but it can definitely extend. And that's what Cherubini does. And that's why I'm so happy that we finally got Cherubini. So that's what Cherubini does. And I think two is the right way. But like I said, if you want to play three, I mean, it's nothing stopping you. So just go, just go for it. Hey, it's your way you want to play BAs. Um, after that, Continuing on with the links, I play one copy of Borosaur because Borosaur wins games. And he's so damn easy to make in this deck. Like, oh my god. <laughs> so easy. Um, Underclock Taker because Underclock Taker is cool. And if you have him and Beatrice on board, it's like, that's the old way we used to play before Terabini. But he still comes up. Uh, next off, I like to run Old Rusty. Yeah, Old Rusty. I mean, you got the PKs, why not? You know, he helps to extend as well. So, one copy of Rusty. Um, for my fan, for my for my um, Nightmare Engine, I only run two copies of... I mean, I run Cerberus and Phoenix. I mean, I could run Unicorn, but I'm like, eh. I like these two because this pops back row. This pops special summon monsters. And uh, it's, it's cool. I mean, I could put in Unicorn. I mean, it's, it's ways you can. But for right now, this has been working fine for me. So... Uh, next off for my XYZs, I run three copies of Dante. I could take out one Dante and put in, you know, the Unicorn, but I like Dante at three. You know, I know some people put him at two, but i never seen a VA deck, you know, over the years with playing only three Dante. You know, I mean, only not playing three Dante. You gotta play Dante. I mean, as long as he's at three, I mean, why not max him out, you know? Something can happen to him. So, you know, I, I think that for him to still survive this long is awesome. You know, he's, he, he's, I mean, this dude even wearing Timberlands. <laughs> he's wearing Timberlands. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I love Dante. Dante has been good to me. And he's at three. He's been, he's, he's a survivor. Why not? So I run three copies of Dante. But it's my preference. Um, Next off, I want one copy of Beatrice. She's awesome. I never think she's going to come back to three. Unless Konami's smoking some drugs. 
Uh, then I'm running one copy of um, Fan of Night Breaksword. He's so easy to make in this deck, and he pops stuff. Uh, next off, from the last of XYZs, I run one XYZ Rebellion Dragon. You know, he comes up, you know, at times. I mean, he's an easy card to take out if you want to put in, you know, Levia Sea Dragon or whatever you can. But, you know, I don't have him because he, he comes up. Um, from my ex, from from my other cards I play, I play one copy of Virgil. You know, Virgil's still homeboy. I mean, I remember back in the day, this card used to be a problem. Maybe not so much now, but when he comes up, he he comes up. So, one copy of Virgil, and last but not least, for my for my extra deck monsters, I want one copy of the Pilgrim. If you get the Pilgrim out, you know you pretty much got game. You know he's he's just like he's like a walking. Destroyer, like this guy's, he's he's awesome. You know, he helps you draw cards, and you know he's 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 just he's just that damn good. So that's my deck profile, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, I don't, I do have a side deck, but like I said, side deck is your preference. Whatever you, whatever meta game that you're in, whatever locals you in, that's your preference. But you know, if I was to have a side deck, you know, which I do, you know, I, I have like um. I got the Kaijus in there because Kaijus, they're awesome. I mean, you know. And then you, know, you want to put Call by the Graves in there, you can. You know, there's so many ways you want. And you want to put in like extra hand traps in there, like Ghost Over, you can. So, like I said, there's no really wrong way to. It's, your side deck is your preference. So, but I'd like to thank you guys for taking the time to, uh, listen, to, my, to listen to my ways of playing BAs, you know, and uh, taking the time to listen to what I have to say. So, I'd like to thank you guys. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe to our channel for more Team Time Rally content. This has been the Harpy Guy, a.k.a. Cosmo, <laughs> with a deck profile. Peace.